Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. Well, I still got some more work to do on the saw till. It's all glued together, but I have to do uh, some filing and notches in here for the saw handles to fit into. And I need to drill this for the quarter inch pegs that are going to keep the saw blades from touching each other. I'm going to do that later this afternoon. Then I have to sand it down and get it stained up with uh, Old Sneelox blow salad dressing, spaghetti sauce, and wood preservative. Yeah, it's becoming a thing now. But I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about some stuff that I've had gathering up on the bench. Over the summer during my travels, I went to different places. And when I stopped at Burgess the last time, they had some uh, barn beam drills. Now these are in real sad shape. They had a mark five bucks. None of them will drill. This one is a small shanked inch and a half auger bit. And I think I'll bring this one back to being a barn auger. I have to straighten the shank and sharpen it up and see if I can't make it work. It's been filed on the wrong side and the lips have been cut away and I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it work at all. These two, I think I can do something with. What I expect to do is turn them into bits for the beam drills. Now this one has a handle on it that was made up out of some firewood. Somebody cobbled this on there just to be able to say that they've done it. This is an antique, but it's really in rough shape. It, it won't stay in there anymore. The lips on the drill are pretty good, but they've been sharpened the wrong way. So the timing is off on the drill bit, and I'm going to have to go through and retime the drill bit and make it so it'll cut again. But even though those are junkers, I think I can salvage them. Not to be beam drills. Not to be T-handle drills. But to fit this. This is a barn beam drill. You've seen the video that I made on it where I rebuilt this. Got it working. Well, it came with some drill bits. These are two two-inch drill bits that have been sharpened, cleaned up, made to work reasonably well. This is a one-inch bit. This is an inch and a half, but it's a small shank drill bit. Somebody uh, filed this down with a notch in it so that it would fit into the chuck, but it doesn't fit tightly. It's really loose. These two have enough steel there that I can turn down a half inch shank on it so it'll fit the chuck on the barn beam drill. So after I get these cleaned up and ready to go, I'll put them in the lathe, I'll turn the shank down, we'll see if we can't make barn beam drills out of them. This was an interesting little item that I picked up. It's a multi-tool. Now generally multi-tools aren't a big thing for me. But this one's kind of unique. I've never seen one like it before. This is an early version of a multi-tool. By loosening this collar, I can slide this out and I can take then I can take the screwdriver bit and spin it back inside and have all of them hidden or swing out any one of the four
There's small, two mediums, and a large. I can have a small bit out, slide it back in, lock down the collet, and that captures the screwdriver bits so that they can't swing back in. So that gives you an option of having four different sized screwdrivers here in this one kit. If you pull this all the way out, it has a small drill bit for starting screws. Take this little bit of scrap and Spin that drill bit down in there. And with a lot of work, we can make a pilot hole for a screw. We can loosen up the collet, pull that out, spin it around, pick out the screwdriver bit we want. Slide it back in, tighten up the collet, and drive the screw. Now this is more of a novelty. These really aren't that useful. Looks like somebody had this around a while and carried it with them, because the nickel plating has worn off the ferrule so much. If that had laid in the drawer, I could imagine more wear on the handle and less on the ferrule. Kind of an interesting thing. I don't know much about it other than what I've just told you, and that's just strictly by observation. If any of you know anything about it, perhaps you can give me something in the comments to give me an idea where to look. As it is, just an interesting toy. Kind of along the lines, kind of along the lines of uh, this one, which lets you pull tools out of the back and run all kinds of things. Both of these were an attempt at a multi-tool. None of them that I've found have worked worth a darn. They were always just a little bit too lightweight and a little bit too poorly made to actually be effective. But they're an interesting little toy. Not something you're going to use very often though. It's kind of like this set of Boy Scout camping equipment. Of course, the Boy Scout camping equipment is just a little bit better. The knife actually cuts on that, and it's got a spoon and a fork in there so that you can actually use. The only reason I have this one is my brother Bob, when he came home from the Air Force, bought one of these at the airport and gave it to me. It had a leather sheath, and the leather sheath had a little uh, clip on it that supposedly held this in. Well, I put this on my belt because I was I was about 13 at the time. I put the holster on my belt, went out into the woods thinking that I had all the tools I would ever need. This came with a leather scabbard and I thought that it was just the perfect little tool. Put the leather scabbard on my belt and went out into the woods with it. And promptly the thing came out of the leather scabbard and I lost it. So when I saw this in an antique shop, I thought, well, I recognize that it's not worth a whole lot. It's got all kinds of things in it. I mean, you can open up tools that you're never gonna be able to do anything with. But it's kind of a cool idea. It's not a survival knife. This is more of a get you in trouble knife. because it's got enough stuff in here to make you think you're okay. None of it's gonna be good enough to get you out of any problems. K 
can opener, bottle opener, saw, knife blade, shears, scraper, all, two screwdrivers, corkscrew, and of course the fork and spoon. Kind of a fun little thing to have. I'm going to try and figure out how to make it another scabbard for it that has a much better locking mechanism so that I don't lose this again. Not that I'm ever going to try and use it to save myself from the rigors of the wild north. But it's a reminder of when I was 13 years old my brother gave me something cool. So these are all things that I got at antique shops and they're kind of fun but they're not very useful. If any of you know anything about this one, I'd appreciate you letting me know in the comments because I can't find anything on it. I also picked up this extension rule. It goes out to four feet one inch but this little screw right here is stripped. So I'm going to have to disassemble it, see if I can't fix that screw. It's a smaller version of this one. This is an exact match. Just this one is longer. This one goes out to eight feet, one and a half inches. So I thought they would make a nice pair. Once again, five bucks. When you get things with a little thing wrong with them, you can negotiate a lot better. That's the result of my latest field trips. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.